Good girls don't get rich. Huh? What are you talking about? Honestly, what I'm talking about is that if we live life by society standards of what a good girl is, we're not going to achieve the highest level of our success that way. Before I get into it, I want to clarify that I make this episode so humbly. I am going to be talking really candidly about money and I know that can feel triggering to some people and especially like how much I make, how much I used to make. I make this so humbly in the sense that I am no better than anybody else. I'm better at certain things than other people are, but from a soul's perspective, there is no hierarchy. I am not saying that I am better than anybody, and I'm not saying that money makes you better than anybody either, but money is freedom. Money is just the representation of freedom. Money isn't even real. It's just what gives us freedom. And because I know that I am not better than anybody else, I want to make this episode because if I can do it, that means you can do it as well. Anyone can reach your highest level of potential when it comes to your earning potential. And that's all I want to see for you. And I really wanted to make this episode to raise your consciousness in why women don't always achieve their highest financial earning potential. And once you understand consciousness, why you can make different choices so that you don't make those same mistakes or you don't fall into the same trap that so many other women do so I wanted to say that because this is actually the second time I filmed this episode and the first time I was like oh, if you don't know me I feel like a lot of what I'm saying here can be taken so poorly and I just want my intention to be so clear which is that I have reached a point where I am free I am financially free, meaning that I don't have to get up and work every single day if I don't want to. And I want that for you. I want whatever your financial freedom dream life looks like. I want that for you. And I hope that making this episode will help you get one step closer to being there. And so that being said, let's get into it, shall we? Whether we know it or not, we all have stories that we tell ourselves about money in our head. And this story can be determined by so many different factors. One of the big ones being how our parents look at money and how our parents talked about money when we were younger. And uh, so many of those factors are completely outside of our control. And the big one for women is the societal conditions placed on us that differentiate because we are women or if you're born a woman. Just to open up the sharing circle really quick because this is a safe space. Obviously, we're in my closet, the safest space there is. I was actually $40,000 in debt in January and I live in a penthouse and I also lived in a penthouse in January that's another story I was down bad as they say and it's so crazy to think about because my birthday I just had a birthday and my birthday last year I was so down bad I was in the trenches and I was just really struggling mentally because I felt like I wasn't moving upwards and I had felt like I was doing a hill situation I went up and then I went down like so I started this career aka influencing social media in 2020 and i was in a content house at the time it was a very dark time of my life i exited the content house and i got my own place in 2022 the whole year of 2022 i had almost tripled my income of what i had made in the content house but at the beginning of 2023 i looked at the business model that i had been running all the the past year and i was like this is completely unsustainable and i'm really unhappy I was very unhappy. I was basically, I had made a business where I was doing shoppable content. And so I was selling things online and that felt extremely unfulfilling to me. I felt like I wasn't pursuing my purpose. And even though I was making incredible money, it was not enough for me. And I realized that I was like, this is not enough. And I actually decided to dissolve a huge contract that I had with a huge brand at the beginning of 2023 and that really set me back financially but I knew it was the right decision and I can now firmly say to almost over a year and a half later that it was the best decision I've ever made in my life the scariest and one of the riskiest but absolute best decision I ever made in my life. My life is a reflection of my choices and I knew that there were going to be consequences good and bad to that decision and I'm so glad I made it anyways. And how I actually came to that decision was in January 2023, I was like looking at my life and I was like, what's wrong? I have money, I have an apartment, I have like these things, I'm traveling, I can buy so much of what I want. Transparently, I was making like 
three hundred thousand dollars a year well i i made almost three hundred thousand dollars in 2022 and i was like what's wrong like why am i so unhappy i'm in therapy i can afford all of these things that i've always wanted to do i can travel um but i'm just like not fulfilled fulfilled so i made a vision board of everything that could make my life the dream life and i was looking at it every day of january 2023 and i was like what is wrong and i realized i was like nothing that i'm doing right now is going to lead me to my ultimate goals like what i'm doing right now is honestly the safe route and um making basically had a business where i was posting shoppable content so every single thing i posted was shoppable and that was just so unfulfilling to me i just felt like i wasn't utilizing my purpose i wasn't helping women really i was just selling shit which i think some people really like to do but for me i knew i was off course and so i had signed this huge contract with a huge brand and i was like i have to cancel it i actually had four people working for me at the time too and i had to let all of them go i couldn't afford to have them on anymore and i literally started over at the beginning of 2023 no plan no idea what was next just knew that i was not on the path to my highest alignment and so that was really tough and all last year i literally made so i went from making 300k in 2022 to making like 80 in 2023 so I could like literally barely pay my bills and it actually resulted in me being forty thousand dollars in debt by January 2024 literally nine months ago <laughs> crazy um and in November 2023 I was like oh I'm in debt I haven't made any money this is a great time to move into a penthouse she's crazy I was literally delusional but I walked into this apartment I was like this is the next phase of my life I have to be here I'm gonna have to figure it out like this is where I'm supposed to do this is where I'm supposed to be I know this is gonna be like a part of my future career and like I just I walked in this place and I was like I, I this is where I'm supposed to be so I'm just gonna figure it out I scraped together all the cash I had had I literally could not pay for movers <laughs> like I I had to dm every single moving company in california until one of them finally agreed to move me in exchange for posting like i that was how uh like i, I was just so screwed at the time and obviously i was so privileged to be able to do that that goes without saying but anyway so i move into this penthouse i'm like uh now what but i had started going viral because like i moved into a penthouse so i was like all right so we're off on a good track and at this time for, the, for like a few months i was finally starting to grow on instagram and tiktok and i was making content that felt really fulfilling to me that was like empowering women if you follow me on instagram or tiktok which you probably do if you're watching my youtube video but i um had started making that around like september of 2023 and so I was, it was like really fresh but i was like getting you know i was getting it going i was slowly trying starting to figure out like what am i doing here right um and now you know it's october of 2024 january was forty thousand dollars in debt now in October, I'm going to be really transparent and say that I have crossed over half a million dollars this year, which is insane, right? Like from 40K in debt to over half a million dollars. And I want to talk about this. I want to be really open and transparent about it because so I credit so much of that obviously to my career, obviously to the hard work I put in, obviously to, you know, like pursuing my passion but so much of it was changing the way that I thought about money one of the things that I spent a lot of time doing um during last year when I was making not as nowhere near as much as I had the year before was I started reading all of these financial literacy books all of these books about financial thinking and I started really looking at the way that I thought about money and being really critical of it and asking myself a lot of really honest questions about my thought processes about money and truly you know obviously so much goes into building fi building wealth bu building financial success but I will tell you if speaking from a daughter of a financial advisor financial planning and financial thinking are two different things financial planning will not get you as far as financial thinking will and that is going, that's like a very, you know, controversial thing to say, but I, I am telling you, your subconscious brain, the beliefs that you have around money, that's running everything. That is the driver's seat to 
every decision that you make about money to your identity surrounding money to your belief system everything is run by your subconscious and once I realized that I started reprogramming my subconscious to think like a rich bitch and then I started to become one and I'm only going up from here and that's truly I know I keep saying this but that's truly why I want to make this video because I want that for you I want you to live your rich bitch lifestyle I'm gonna like for me my rich lifestyle is like I want to be extremely wealthy for a multitude of reasons one of them being is that I view money not only as a resource of freedom but it's also how we make change in this world that it's just is what it is like the way we make change is by having economic power. And I want good people to have economic power. And I'm a good person. I want good things in the world. And I want to have that type of power. And I want to make positive change specifically for women. And so I will continue to pursue that in my lifetime. And financial thinking is such a huge part of that. But that being said... <laughs> kind of broke this episode into like eight different chapters we'll see how on track I stay because the last time I filmed this episode I was like this is way too structured and I really want this to be more conversational more, more like facetiming the besties and being really open honest and transparent about the things that have changed my life financially and so that's what we're gonna do you guys I'm not gonna lie I'm like literally sweaty talking about this because I it's so nerve-wracking being so honest on the internet where people can kind of like rip you to shreds for what you say especially when it's like a little bit woo woo but that is my purpose that's what I'm here for and this message is for the people who are ready to receive it not for the people who aren't so anyways getting into it chapter one the stats so statistically women are less likely to accumulate significant wealth and I want to talk about why that is we can talk all damn day to be honest on the statistics of why that is but one thing that really really stuck out to me that I thought was really interesting and I think critical to know as a woman is that they did a study on boys and girls and the messaging that they're given about money and they were actually both given the same messaging when they were younger like don't spend more than you have save for a rainy day create your own financial independence etc etc like they heard very similar things when it came to financial planning but the difference is is that G little girls on the other hand heard additional messaging that boys didn't hear like it's just as easy to marry rich as it is to marry poor men know more about money than you do money doesn't buy you happiness talking about money is bad it's crass it's shameful it, it's better to do good than to be rich or even girls aren't good at math obviously that plays a huge role in the way that you develop your belief system around money as a kid especially when the ages that your subconscious mind is formed the most is the most um in the development stage is ages 0 to 11 I want to say 7 to 11 and that's when that messaging starts to really come up which is so interesting and you know what it reminds me of it reminds me of the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders and in the, in the last time I filmed this I was so heated I'm gonna try to keep it low-key this time relax but I I watched the Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders documentary if you haven't it's really good I would really recommend it and I had so much respect for these women these women are so badass so hardworking. they seem so kind like so genuine um I was so impressed by their work ethic but what truly deeply saddened me and disappointed me to my core was the pay that they got they there was a part in the documentary where she said if I had to tell you how much I make I would compare it to a Chick-fil-a worker I make as much as if I were to work full-time at Chick-fil-a which is the most like it's just so sad to hear that because the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders are almost as famous if not more famous than the Dallas Cowboys themselves they bring in so much money for the organization and obviously the the football players are making millions of dollars I don't know I think it's like a million a game depending on what your contract is and the Cowboy cheerleaders are making what like 20 an hour I think that that is so sad and insane and their response to it was like oh we just love our sport we just love to do it a man would never they would never do that to men they would never expect men to just love it that much that they just like don't need money that is so women coded like 
patriarchy coded and a lot of these girls had other full-time jobs there was a girl on there who was a full-time dentist while also trying to be a dallas cowboy cheerleader like can you imagine how taxing that is on your body that's that is like an insane athletic sport like that i can't i can't like i thinking about it makes me crazy i need to calm down because it makes me so upset and i and they're just expected to be okay with getting nothing And I think that that is just such a perfect example of how society treats men versus women differently when it comes to income and the messaging that women are given. Like, well, you just love it so much, so you're going to do it for much, much, much less. And you're going to have to work another job on top of that just to be able to do it. Yet a man can run around on a field with with a fucking ball and make millions of dollars. And that's totally acceptable. I think it's really sad and insane and I mean these girls are literally on like selling millions of dollars worth of Dallas Cowboy cheerleader calendars with their bodies all over it and they're not getting a cut of it that's insane to me I I, there needs to be like a literal protest if there's not already I think there's a lot of conversations going on around it up on the internet and I'm really happy about that I'm happy that the documentary brought around this discussion but it why did it have to come to this like why does it have to get to the point where the internet's going crazy you know what I mean it just brings me back to the messaging that girls are given about money versus what boys are given about money or the additional messaging that women are given about money that really really deeply affects us chapter two guilt around money I think one of the first steps, at least for me, but for a lot of women, is just acknowledging that we want to be wealthy and being able to say that out loud. Like, why the fuck should we feel bad for wanting to be rich, for wanting to be free, honestly? And rich means different things to different people, right? For me, I want to be life-changingly wealthy, like world-alteringly wealthy in a way that I want to have the economic power to make a positive change in the world. And I want to live an incredibly luxurious, happy, successful, free lifestyle in the process of that. And I don't think that's shallow to say at all. I do not think that that is um, egotistical. I don't think that's bad in any way. I grew up with such a lack mindset about money because I was emulating my parents um my dad literally would have (laughs) would like have a freak out anytime any of us had to go like the doctor or the hospital because he would already be thinking about the bill before we even walked out the door like that messaging is so ingrained in me that I was so aware of money and specifically I was aware of the lack of it we can talk all day long about financial planning and I'm, I'm sure we will but financial planning can only get you so far your subconscious beliefs about money that's what controls 90 percent of your beliefs your identity your decision making skills around money and that ultimately reflects in your reality your reality is a reflection of your subconscious belief system in every area of your life but obviously we're specifically talking about money I think that as women we all need to get so much more comfortable acknowledging that that we, number one, want money, deserve money, expect money, want to live our rich bitch lifestyle, whatever that means to you, and not having to follow it up with, well, I want to have money so that I can do this for other people. I mean, honestly, I literally did that 30 seconds ago. I want to have so much money because I want to make a positive change in the world. That's very true, but I also want money because I want to live a luxurious lifestyle. I don't want to ever have to worry about money again. I hate worrying about money. I hate worrying about bills. I hate that thought so much, and I I have done everything in my power the past few years to get myself as far away from that that thought and feeling as humanly possible and I want that for you too I don't want you to have to worry about where you how you're going to pay your rent or anything like that and that truly does start with your subconscious and that also starts with being able to say I want wealth I deserve wealth I deserve to live my rich bitch lifestyle and not worry how other people are going to per- perceive you maybe they will perceive you as greedy or bitchy or like shallow whatever it I don't who cares your life is a reflection of your choices you're the only one who has to pay the consequences for your choices so who cares what other people say or think about it if you were a man would you ever feel bad for saying i want to make a lot of money no men would never men are allowed to want such things men are allowed to request such things so why 
shouldn't you be? Why shouldn't we be? Why, why do we have to be quiet about it? And also, why can't we talk about money in our in our circles? That's another part of this. Like, I think it's important to be open and transparent and talking about money with your friends. Talk about money with other people because you know, so much of the time when I talk about to men about money, I'm like, how did you find this out? Oh, I got a buddy who does this. And I got a pal who who told me about this. I'm like, y'all just sit around talking about money. Why? Why don't women do that? Oh, because we're conditioned to think that that's shallow. That's so fucked up. Do you know that for generations, women were literally not allowed to gather in groups like women were not allowed to be alone in groups with each other because they were too powerful and the men knew that and so and there's so many like ripple effects to in our current society even though obviously like oh we're so we're so beyond the patriarchy in so many ways yes we've progressed so much but I see that as a ripple effect of us still being scared to talk about it in groups of women and and that prevents us from gaining more knowledge gaining more perspective about about money I and my friend group am so like open honest and confrontational about money in a way that I'm like not afraid to share the things that I'm learning or making or whatever because I think it's so important that we curate an environment of transparency so that we can all learn from each other all my friends right now are reading a book called I'm going to get into book recommendations but reading a book called um we should all be millionaires by Rachel Rogers because I talk openly about money and it's changing all of their lives and I I, my life changed so I am now trying to you know help the other women in my life change and anyways that's a huge another part about being a woman that we are prevented from being able to talk about these things openly and it's so important that we do you ask any dude how he knows so much about money so much of it is because him and his pals or buddies or whoever talk about it we need to be talking about it I want to be able to use the resource of money to make a positive change in the world. And I also want to be able to use the resource of money to make a positive change in my life. Like I know that my purpose is beyond cooking, cleaning, doing my laundry, driving places, like all the things I pay other people to do or help me with because I, and I refuse to feel bad for that. I refuse to feel bad for wanting even more because wanting wealth is not shallow at all. It is your right to want that. Chapter three, no one is coming. This is also a very important part of this discussion and it may be a little bit uncomfortable to talk about, but I'ma do it. I'ma say the quiet part out loud. And that is that there is a dangerous myth that has been holding women back for so long. And it's the idea that the easiest path to wealth is just to marry or date rich. And I am not saying that marrying or dating rich is wrong. I'm saying it's a trap in that the idea of it is a trap and that as a plan is a trap. This mindset isn't just outdated. It's also very toxic and it's teaching us to see ourselves as supporting characters in our own lives and to center men most of the time because usually we're talking about dating wealthy men, right? And it's like we're taught to wait for some knight in shining armor to ride in and solve all of our problems. But the truth is, and the honestly, the mindset that we need to have is that nobody is coming. No one's coming, babe. And even if they are, nothing in this world comes for free. Buying into the Mary Rich mentality completely sells yourself short. It's saying that your worth is attached to who you can attract not what you can achieve and it completely distorts your perspective your purpose and your goals it's truly a recipe for low self-esteem and for always feeling like you're just not good enough on your own and it's like even if you do marry somebody really wealthy what then if you're not if you own source of income what then you're you're a dependent your financial security is attached to somebody else's success that is not freedom that is a gold shiny cage i think that it is so important to shift perspective and instead of asking what someone else can provide for us ask ourselves like how can i provide for myself how can i build my own wealth how can i build my own security how can i use my passions my skills to curate the lifestyle that I want for myself. And it's not about rejecting love or partnership at all. It's about approaching those things from a perspective of strength and independence and like, I don't need you, I want you. All of the energy that we've spent channeling into waiting for Knight in Shining Armor or looking for him, we need to channel into ourselves. 
our educations, our skills, our careers, our passions, our network. Because at the end of the day, the only person you can truly count on is yourself. You are the only one who is always going to be there for you. And your value is not in who you date or marry and it never has been. Please don't wait for anyone else to recognize your worth. Recognize it yourself. And then do the coolest thing ever and go out there and surprise yourself with the fullness of who you are. Surprise yourself with all that you are capable of. And that's how you truly get rich in wealth, in spirit, in relationship. And in the satisfaction of knowing I did that shit myself and my way. And speaking personally about dating, I've gone so back and forth about this. Like I feel like conflicted, especially with the whole like sprinkle sprinkle movement. I don't want you to think that I'm saying not to date rich dudes or girls. Like that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying not to put your eggs in that basket and not to rely on the idea that you are going to date somebody who's going to take care of you in that way. I think that is a super outdated and damaging um, thought process to have. But personally speaking, like I am in a place where in my dating life, I'm not interested in dating somebody who's like way below my financial or social bracket because it just doesn't work. Statistically, literally statistically, it doesn't work. Like I'm not asking for more than I'm giving. Like I would love, honestly, I would love to date somebody who is a self-made entrepreneur and really successful, someone I can respect and look up to. And it's like really wealthy from doing what they're doing because I know it will add value to what I'm doing but I will never rely on that and that is also paired with like that's not enough for me dating somebody wealthy is not enough for me that's also paired with I want them to be incredibly emotionally mature I want them to be a feminist I want them to have all of their own things going on I want them to be very independent I you know I want them to add value to my life in many different ways. I'm not relying on them to add value to my life in a financial way. Honestly, what I want in terms of like dating financially is just like if I want to go to Bora Bora for a weekend, I don't want to pay for you. You know what I mean? Like pay for yourself. I don't want to have to worry, ever worry about your financial status. Like all I want to worry about is my own and not even ever have to think about it. You know what I mean? Like that's where I'm personally at with dating and I feel really, yeah, I, I obviously like I'm single. Like I, I am still really figuring out what's going to work for me and what's not going to work for me, but that's where I'm at right now with it. And I feel really, I feel so unattached from dating because of that mindset like I honestly have decentered men and decentered dating so much that I'm like I don't give a fuck just like don't bother me <laughs> like add a lot of value to my life intellectually intellectually stimulate me be emotionally mature I want to ta- have like the longest conversations ever like I want to learn from you I want to respect you I want you to add a lot of value to my life and besides that leave me alone and that leads us to chapter four the lack mindset lies that we've been told another huge part of this equation is that the tv and the media and the social media and all of the things it tells us about being a woman financially women are so often portrayed on social media and tv and movies as like a shop till you drop addicts and uh we're you know drinking these overpriced lattes all the time and making a mess of our bank accounts and we don't understand stocks or whatnot like so much messaging telling us that women are bad with money and because we have all this messaging we're often telling ourselves that we're saying it out loud like oh i'm just so bad with money oh my god i'm terrible with money we have to stop doing that that is the next step in in creating your you know rich bitch lifestyle stop saying you're bad at money and even even if you are it's not your fault it is not your fault you have been fed these lies your whole entire life but the good news about it is that you literally have the power to flip the script the power is yours your life is a reflection of your choices your life is a reflection of the things that you you tell yourself have to toss out this like old limiting belief script that society has given us about being a woman making money 
and we have to forgive ourselves for like any past money hiccups we have to forgive ourselves for any debt that we have we have to forgive ourselves for any like quote bad decisions we make around money guilt and shame are literally the lowest vibration on the vibration scale the frequency scale like it is literally the lowest vibe you can possibly get and you will not curate your rich bitch lifestyle by feeling guilt or shame around your spending habits you can you have the power to change them you have the power to say start saying positive things about your your money spending habits right now but do not hold on to guilt and shame just purely forgive yourself like clean slate forgiveness that is so important to this process that is truly what's going to help you break free from the under earning money trap and like lead you to your rich bitch lifestyle you have to remember that your earning potential is so much bigger than society wants you to believe so much bigger Like even speaking personally, I am in in a woman dominated industry that makes what like billions of dollars a year influencing like social media literally makes billions of dollars a year. Like we have more opportunities than ever to get our rich bitch lifestyle to to achieve wealth to curate positive change in the world with our economic growth. Do not let million dollar lies prevent you from achieving your million dollar future that's a rachel rogers quote which is the book i mentioned earlier so good chapter five money mantras and tools that i've used i i don't want this episode to be a million years long but even though there's still so 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 much to say i feel like this is a really good intro to like open up your consciousness but this is my favorite part and the most important part of this episode and these are some tools that i have used that have literally literally changed my life so number one we already went over this we have to stop saying we're bad with money replace that saying anytime you're like oh my god i'm so bad with money replace that saying with an affirmation i was doing my affirmations this morning and one of them's like money loves me i don't work for money money works for me (laughs) i literally say so many affirmations about money it's not even funny i'll I'll, i'll put in the description of some really good ones that i love um also another one is i i can work all day and make a lot of money i cannot work at all and make a lot of money money is not attached to my work ethic which crazy concept especially living in a capitalist society but like literally change my life I'm, I'm gonna be so real with you and say that this is the least amount i have ever worked this year and the most money i've ever made now don't get me wrong I still work a lot like I run my own business I manage myself I um, you know post on content and I, I do work a lot but a lot of it doesn't feel like work and I'm not nearly as stressed as I've ever been and the work that I'm doing is not like over straining and, and I also have a social life I also work out every day like I am able to have a very well balanced life and I make so much money like that is a thing that is the thing that is possible that's crazy Okay, the second one is really fun. So any time you have a negative thought about money, like, oh, well, like she can do it, but that doesn't mean I can. I'm not this enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not this enough challenge those negative thoughts challenge those negative beliefs about money because you know you want to know something there are so many really really dumb millionaires like there's a lot of like stupid ass millionaires and I say that lovingly I really do I say that from such a loving non-judgmental place like there are some dumb ass millionaires out there so if they can do it why the fuck can't you there are people who literally like fucking rubbed two rubber bands together and then call it a silly band and made like fucking millions of dollars like you you can be a millionaire like what what's stopping you You can live your rich rich lifestyle like don't don't assume that you know everything don't assume that you know every single avenue to gain the rich bitch lifestyle that you want and you're just not capable of it because you don't you don't know everything so challenge those beliefs and create new stories in your head because those beliefs whether you uh, whether you realize it or not are literally holding you back so much from the lifestyle that you crave and deserve number three is making better money decisions and I I say this lightly because obviously this is like a little bit into financial planning but also like really think about the things that you're spending money on and the things that you're not spending money on for example they did a study 
um on people and said if they gave you an extra like few thousand dollars a month or something what they would spend it on and only two percent of the pot of the people they interviewed said that they would spend that money on time saving services like um housekeepers or a chef or you know a driver or things that would just like save them time And that is so interesting to me because that's like the first thing that I do when I make money is I invest into more of my time. It is the most important resource is time. Like you can use that time to curate the lifestyle that you want, whether that's working more or starting a new project or resting or seeing your friends who fill up, fill you up with energy and give you more energy to like go pursue your projects or working out. And that makes you a healthier body so that you're able to pursue your goals and feel good about it you know what I mean like that is a million dollars decision that is a rich bitch mindset decision like consider the things that you're spending money on and the things that you're not spending money on and maybe change those a little bit like I have somebody who cooks for me have somebody who cleans for me have somebody who does my laundry I don't I don't drive like (laughs) I literally don't drive like I like to work in the car so I just gave my car to my sister and now I don't drive and I just like have people drive me or I Uber or I Waymo or Lyft everywhere like and that definitely cost me more but it also doesn't because it's an investment into my time and that's so much more valuable to me at least for now you know what I mean so consider that and think about ways that you could be investing your money like a little bit more wisely or differently you know what I mean and last but absolutely not least is my money mantras. So this was literally the last um, tool that I implemented before I really started raking in the cash. Like I'm not kidding. I started saying these, singing these songs and saying this rhymes, um, these rhymes when I was still like really struggling financially. And then I I literally physically felt the shift in my vibration and in my body that these mantras and this song made for me um, uh, in my belief system around money. So I'll start with my song. So you know that pit in your stomach that you get anytime you spend money that you feel like you shouldn't have or like have to pay rent and like took a chunk out of your savings account or whatnot. It's like that, you know, you know that pit in your stomach that you get where you're like, ugh ow I didn't want to spend that like that sucks this is the song that I sing all right I love spending money because every time I do it keeps coming back to me and 10 times more too I love spending money because every time I do it keeps coming back to me and 10 times more too I love spending money because every time I do it keeps coming back to me and 10 times more too everybody now like I will literally like that song is so deeply lodged in my brain like I feel like my subconscious is like shut the fuck up girl like oh my god we get it we get it no because we get it you're making so much money by spending money like we get it and I will go so far as to be like okay I just spent $240 on this flight like that kind of hurt but I was like I love spending money every time I do it keeps coming back to me and 10 times more too I just made $24,000 like I'll be like ah like I just made $24,000 like I just spent $240 and that's how I've like retrained my subconscious and my brain to view spending money as making money because there's also this um idea and that's backed by smart people and it's like the way that you spend money is also the way that you make money so that if so if you're subconsciously like oh like 240 dollars like that's so much money oh like I'm spending it if that's how you feel about spending that's also how energetically what you're putting out there about making it so it's like you're rejecting making 240 dollars it does that make sense I hope it does like what I'm saying is that you need to reframe your subconscious around spending money. The other little chant that I do is everything I spend comes back to me times 10. Everything I spend comes back to me times 10. And I like, again, it's it's like the same thing, but just like a little bit shorter. And I have that written everywhere in my journals and on my mirrors. And I'm like, oh my God, like I'm making so much money. Meanwhile, I've spent like so much money, you know what I mean? But clearly it's working out for me and I want it to work out for you too but I would so so strongly recommend you start implementing that literally do it 
every single time you think about money every time you spend two dollars on a latte every time you drive anywhere and you're using your gas say it to yourself non-stop get so annoyed with yourself for saying it you don't understand the effect the positive effect this is going to have on your life that is the one thing that i'm going to ask you to do or take away from this video is just to start implementing implementing those mantras and see how it changes your mindset about money i want i want so bad for you to feel financially free to not feel like you're caught in this rock in a hard place about money like i want that for you and i know you're capable of achieving it i know your earning potential is so beyond what you think it is and i am just so proud of you for even watching this video and taking that step and if you want to take one step further i'm going to put the um a bunch of book recommendations on the screen and in the in the description i have read so many financial thinking books all written by women in this past year that has truly changed my perspective changed my life changed my income and i highly recommend you start with we should all be millionaires by rachel rogers that was like a really pivotal book for me and i want to say too like i've read rich dad poor dad i've read millionaire next door i've read think and grow rich and those are all very useful they have a lot of like useful information and whatever but the books i recommend apply so well to my personal experience as a woman because women work and make money very differently than men do and that's because of societal conditioning okay and a woman's relationship with money is as complex as all the other relationships in her life like every woman is juggling so much and these books are not just about financial planning they're about financial thinking there's so many nuances that you know rich dad poor dad isn't addressing and that that's why i specifically chose this list of books for women i want to end by saying you are capable of greatness you are capable of accumulating wealth i truly believe in you and the more that you believe in yourself the more you're literally actively changing the world because empowered women empower women i say that with my fucking chest dude empowered women empower women you are ch the more money you make the more that you believe in yourself the more you love yourself the more confident you are in yourself the more you are literally changing the world you will never understand the ripple effect a confident successful woman has on the world the more you become it, the more you are helping other women become it too. And I'm just, I'm so grateful and happy that you're here. I'm so filled with happiness and joy right now. You don't even understand. But anyways, blah, blah, blah. If you like this video, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions I can answer in the next video, I would be literally happy to. Also active literally daily on all of my other channels. I'm Maddie B. Webb on everything. Snapchat, TikTok, Instagram. Go get rich, bitch. Love you. Believe in you. Bye.